Ah, Global Connections here on a given hmm, Monday afternoon. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. And we're doing Global Connections today with Kartiki Mishra, who joins us from Varanasi, India. Hi, Kartiki. It's been a long time. Yeah, Jay, it's been a long time since I did the last video in June 2019. So it's first in 2020. <laughs> okay. Well, that's uh, whoo, nine months anyway. Huh? Nice to see your smiling face. So I want to catch up with you. Let's see. Last, last time I looked, you were in business school in Varanasi. Can you talk about your academic yes. career? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was pursuing my BBA. I completed that. And now I am pursuing my MBA uh, from the very same institute in Varanasi. And uh, so what are you specializing in? What What is it that interests you? What are your courses like? Uh, I think I would like to specialize in finance, if it's possible. It's in next year. It's not in the first year. So specialization will be the in next year. So I will be taking finance in that. Okay. And you had some construction going on on your house, on your apartment, uh, back the last time we spoke or two. Is that finished now? Yes, yes, that's finished. You're still living in the same place? Yeah, yeah. You know, there was a there was a thing on uh, television here about water in India, and uh, it, it described a, a particular apartment house. And I thought of you. Uh, it was a nice looking apartment house, except they had no water, and so the owners of the building had to uh, ship in the water in tanker trucks in order to supply their tenants with with water on an everyday basis. Uh, do you have that problem in Varanasi? I think we don't have that problem in Varanasi, but in few particular areas of India, uh, we do have that problem. In uh, Maharashtra and few other areas, there is this issue of water crisis, and we are trying to manage it. Yeah, well, you know, this is the 21st century. Welcome to the 21st century, where water becomes more important, more dear, more expensive, more hard to find. And uh, I think we, we see the future unfolding in India, where water is, is hard to find. Well, you know, he left the United States for that trip with Prime Minister Modi um, just as the coronavirus epidemic was breaking in this country. And uh, it, had, it had wrecked havoc already in China. And uh, people were saying, why, why is he doing this? Why is he leaving, uh, you know, the helm of the ship uh, when he has a crisis on his hands in the United States? Um, and it was not clear that there was a significant benefit for going to India at that time. Uh, what, what, are the, what do the people in India think about the benefits uh, that Trump or Modi enjoyed by reason of that meeting? Yeah, uh, basically, if I would like to say that it's more uh, a style of diplomacy rather than uh, it's more on focused on showing that United States and India are good friends. And uh, this is the emphasis of that particular visit. Donald Trump, uh, when arrived in India, he was very well received by the Indian people. The Modi government gave him a very grand welcome. So it was not just about Donald Trump and Prime Minister Modi. It's more about United States and India and the relationship which we have. So that was something which we were celebrating. And it was a 36 hours visit, a quite uh, small one in terms of relation. So it was a successful one, at least from my point of view. You know, um, uh, there were there were uh, disturbances, uh, protests, uh, street street scene demonstrations uh, at the time that Trump was in India. Can you tell me what what all of that was about? Was that about the contention between Muslims uh, and Hindus, or something else? Uh, look, uh, government rolled out a bill called CAA and NRC. Uh, it's particularly uh, Citizenship Amendment Act, which stated that uh, people from different minorities, countries, uh, Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Bangladesh will get a citizenship in India. And the only community which was not allowed to get a citizenship through this act was the Muslim community. So this was one reason that people are protesting against the CEA. And the other thing is NRC, which is called National Registration for Citizenship. 
citizens. Uh, people are playing the objective of throwing out the illegal immigrants. So people are afraid. Basically, the minorities are afraid that government might use as a tool of Muslims. Yes, this uh, I think misconception is there between people, and that led to a uh, protest in Delhi, and that was going on, and that protest led to some riots in Delhi in during that duration. Yeah, I, the other thing that has come up uh, in recent weeks has been has been the uh, the problem in Kashmir where the Indian government has essentially uh, uh, shut Kashmir down, separated it from the internet uh, and, you know, and other barriers for in Kashmir. Uh, what's that all about? And, and, and um, how do the Indian people feel about that? Look, uh, Kashmir issue is a very uh, difficult issue for India since 1947. Uh, Kashmir was an independent country which joined India through a uh, article of accession to the Indian Union in seven back then. And after that, we have some issues with Pakistan regarding Kashmir. The Pakistan claims Kashmir and India claims Kashmir. It's it's a similar situation like of Palestine and Israel, if you know. So that's a kind of conflict which we are having. Kashmir being a uh, a special state in India, it was a granted, uh, we have granted that state particular privileges, which was under Article 370 and 35A. And this article was revoked by the Modi government and it was on their manifesto since beginning that they said that whenever they will come to power, they will revoke this uh, particular article. So they revoked that and uh, to prevent riots and protests in uh, that particular uh, Kashmir area, which can become violent and uh, difficult for government to handle. They put some restrictions on Kashmir, but it's, it's not like that they are violating that uh, particular human rights. Sometimes people say that human rights are being violated. So I don't say because uh, terrorism was also taking place in Kashmir. So if we remove that Article 340, uh, 370, and merge it with India in complete way, I think we will develop Kashmir and that's the point of the government. Many laws which were not applicable in uh, Kashmir back then when that law was existing will now Im be implemented in Kashmir. So I can say that uh, revocation of Article 370 was a good step and it should be appreciated. Ah, okay. Um... I guess in, in most issues, you're going to agree with Premier Modi, Modi then, huh? Uh, look, Prime Minister Modi is from my constituency, my city only. He's a member of parliament from my very same city of Varanasi, so I support him. <laughs> okay. Speaking of Varanasi, I mean, this sort of leads to the next question I have for you. Um, there was a piece on television recently, and we all know about... Um, you know, the, the Ganges and uh, Varanasi and uh, people people um, praying near the river and bathing in the river and all that. And one of, the, one of the issues raised, which I suppose is not a new issue, is that that may not be all that healthy to do that. And I, and I wonder if there's a, a, any steps being taken uh, to clean the river, to clean the pollution, uh, to avoid bathing in a river that could make you sick. And I guess part of that is I want to know if you go to the river and you bathe over there. Uh, and the government is trying to do that. Uh, it's not since Modi government. It's back in 1980s from the time of Rajiv Gandhi till now. Many governments are trying to curb that pollution uh, in the Ganges River or the Ganga River. Yeah. You, so you don't go down there regularly and bathe in the river then? No, I don't get it. Okay, and you wouldn't recommend that I come to Varanasi and bathe in the river, I guess. Uh, I don't. I don't recommend it. You can do that. Many people are doing that. No one is really? getting sick. You can do that. Uh, but I would like. I would be glad if you visit Varanasi. It's a very ancient city, and you will yes, get a I chance know. to see a lot of old things. Yes, I know. And you told me before that you will stay in Varanasi, right? That's that's your inclination to remain there after school when you take your MBA and um, get a job yes, and make yes. a career in Varanasi. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, if so, that's possible, uh, I, I will do that. 
I want to I want to turn to uh, global health for a minute. You know, we, we are suffering. This country is locked up in the coronavirus uh, trend, uh, pa uh, pandemic, and so is Europe. Um, and there are cases in Africa. There are cases in South America. I'm afraid I don't know the status of the pandemic in India. Can you tell me? Yeah, uh, I think as for now, 124 people are infected and there was casualty of two. And government is trying to take steps how to stop it, how to curb it. And uh, visas uh, on arrival and any foreign travel is suspended April 15th from the side of government it is issued. And other schools and colleges and public gatherings have been closed down till 31st March that no schools and colleges would be open, no gyms would be open, no public gatherings would be done. And government is trying to take steps how to stop that virus because it's spreading uh, day by day. Uh, each uh, two or three cases come up every day. So government is trying to stop that. Is, are people dying? Yeah, two casualties till now. Mm. And how about you? Have you changed your life about it? No, I think um, in Varanasi there is a lockdown of colleges, so I am staying at home currently. So as for now, it's not affecting. But if if this carries on for long, it may affect education, it may affect businesses, it may affect tourism and various other sectors. The coronavirus will not only affect the health, it will affect the economy as a whole. We can see a recession if this continues in 2020. Yeah, well, are you, are you washing your hands every day? Are you uh, uh, providing social distance uh, six feet or more to the people you meet? Um, are you worried? Yes, I'm worried and I'm washing hands. We have sanitizers and everything. We are taking proper measures. Medical masks are there. And mm. uh, I'm avoiding that public gathering. So I'm taking my measures. It's not yet in Varanasi. No one is reported yet to be affected by coronavirus in Varanasi city. Is there testing going on as there, as there is in other countries? Uh, are test kits available? Are people being tested for the virus? Uh, people are being tested. Uh, the people who arrive on airport or on any major seaports are being tested and people who are traveling basically on airports or any uh, particular area from one place to other district, people are being tested. And government is trying to get as many as people possible to know how what's the situation of this coronavirus in India. But as for now, 124 are there. And I think this, this count can increase if in future and prime minister modi held a video conference recently yesterday or day before yesterday on this coronavirus with eight neighboring countries which we have that how to tackle this issue are you closing borders yeah we have closed the borders so for example uh, the border with china is closed border with china is closed you know, I'm impressed, uh, um, even startled by your answer. It, it confirms to me that we really do have a global epidemic, that uh, India is so far away from uh, from the US and from Europe and Africa and South America. Um, and, and you are going through the same process that we are, uh, day by day, event by event, um, advance by advance, uh, in, in the cases by cases. That's very, very interesting. But let me ask you something you referred to a minute ago, and this is really important for you as a business student. Um, you mentioned that the economy of India will be affected. Um, is it affected now? Is there a slowdown now? Uh, uh, is there less, um, fewer transactions of goods and services happening in India and in Varanasi right now? Uh, as for now, things are quite normal because the situation is under control. But if this thing takes place in, on a huge scale, if, if, if something like that happens, so then it will drastically affect. As for uh, manufacturing and other sectors, the few sectors are being affected. 
that's not due to the coronavirus that's due to the slow recessions which we are having the gdp growth rate is now low that's not due to coronavirus it's due to previous steps and the slow down in the global economy as so well. the stock uh, the there is a blood bath in the stock market it's it's drastic, uh, drastically affected you can see that stock markets are crashing in india 2000 point 3000 point and government is trying to stop that that crash of stock market um, it's it's it is have economic impact on india if not control lead to further implications well, it's a great concern. It's a great concern here for sure. Um, and I uh, gather from what you say, it's a great concern in India as well. And that means it's a great concern around the world. So I have a question I would like to put to you as, as a business uh, student, yeah? a master's, a graduate business student, if you will. Um, let's assume uh, that from a medicine and health point of view, from a contagion point of view, from a new cases point of view, um, this all slows down, say, in September, in the fall, okay? And by that time, there will be substantial damage to the economy of the United States, the economy of Europe, Asia, Africa, maybe India too. Maybe, maybe India is right along with all the others. How long will it take? What will have to happen for the global economy to recover? What are, what are the steps? What are the increments? What are the... Uh, what are the, uh, the, 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 the demarcations of a recovery? Look, as for uh, if, if thing goes bad until uh, September and we, we see a fall in uh, consumer uh, consumption of goods, manufacturing and other sectors, one thing which is possible, which I can, th uh, I can say that uh, rather than focusing on global trade, what countries can do is focus on the internal trade between states, state to state. This will help the economy to sustain for a bit longer time because uh, population will be there, demand will be there, and few things which we can produce can, uh, will be marketed. I think medicines and other issues, uh, I think uh, medical companies will benefit from this coronavirus. It's a very huge possibility. And uh, as for India, I can say that if uh, this coronavirus continues in China, so it's unfortunate for them, but it's an opportunity for India that uh, as manufacturing industries are being shut down in China, uh, India can use this as an opportunity to shift that industries from China to India. Because uh, the cases are less, the threat is less. If it is controlled properly, uh, we can have, a, I think, a growth by 2021. Because I'm not seeing, um, it's not possible that we can uh, solve this issue in 2020. It's very big to solve it in, in a very small period of time. And as for vaccine, there is no such vaccine for coronavirus. The only thing is that we can take precautions. Uh, you talked about uh, opportunities. And one of the things that struck me today is that people in this country are all staying home. Different periods, different terms and conditions. But pretty much everybody's staying home. They're not going to work very much and they're trying to work from home or maybe not work from home. But what they are doing at home is they're on the internet. And you get two effects from that. One is you get, you get a lot of demand on internet resources and maybe that's slowing things down. Um, but the other thing is they are buying goods and services, especially goods, even food, medicines, what have you on the internet. They're buying them through Amazon. And so if I had to guess, Carnegie, I would guess that Amazon is, um, is doing well and uh, it's probably a, a stock to watch. Uh, but I'm wondering if there is an Amazon in India, whether people are relying yeah. more on it than before um, and, and, and whether the same phenomenon exists in India. Yeah, Amazon is functioning in India and they are, they are selling it. But the problem is that uh, more or less, even if we talk about online buying, it is focused on manufacturing, it is focused on industries. Amazon does a very simple thing. It takes the goods from manufacturer and delivers it to the consumer. If manufacturers will be not able to produce goods and commodities, how will Amazon be selling that to consumers? 
is if, if this thing takes place if you are uh, relating so amazon as for now is doing great but if this thing continues even the manufacturers will face problem and amazon will also face problem because whatever things we buy online is produced somewhere in some part of the country in some part of the world so if coronavirus is there it will affect the global supply chain of commodity and goods as for now it looks good but if manufacturers are affected if suppliers are affected uh, amazon will also fail how about food kartiki Hmm. Uh, food supplies are there uh, in India. At least it's not a major issue yet, but food supplies are there. Uh, government has stopped the exports of few particular medicines. Food supplies are there. Stocks are there. Government is prepared for everything. And uh, as for global thing, I I see that uh, it should not grow. Coronavirus will affect if if things go out of control. But for now. How things are working? Well, that's good to hear. I, I hope it. Uh, I hope. I hope that's uh, that's what happens in the U.S. But it's not clear. Um, the other. The other. The last thing I wanted to ask you about is this. Um, it was reported yesterday uh, that the Trump administration approached uh, a firm, um, a, uh, uh, a biomedical firm in Germany, uh, called uh, CureVac. C U R E V A C, um, which uh, which ostensibly has uh, candidates for for trials uh, for vaccines right now uh, at the very early part of of the uh, you know of the of the pandemic, and the Trump uh, the Trump administration uh, allegedly tried to buy exclusive rights uh, to the uh, intellectual property of this CureVac firm. Which that was made public, uh, and a lot of people in the German government were uh, very unhappy with it. Uh, and the deal, I don't think the deal is going to happen. I don't think the United States uh, should have, or could have, or would have been able to buy exclusive rights to a vaccine when the vaccine is so important around the world to every single country you can think about. In any event, um, I know that India has a lot of smart people who are skilled in biomedicine. A lot of smart people who could work on, do research and development of a vaccine or uh, some sort of uh, viral um, viral medicine to deal with the um, you know the the onset of the virus and also to vaccinate people, inoculate them against the virus going forward. This is the most important thing in the world right now for sure, um, and uh, mm. we we know that uh, there's been research in Europe, we know there's been uh, research in China for sure. Um, I'm not sure the level of research here uh, in the United States. Uh, I think people are more focused here on medical treatment than development of vaccines. Um, but I'm wondering about about India. India has the capability to participate in this uh, global uh, uh, collaboration uh, to try to develop uh, medicines and vaccines for a coronavirus. What have you heard about that? Yeah, uh, the uh, people in India are trying to develop a vaccine. It's on early stages. Uh, it, it, it's possible that we will develop a vaccine or it's possible that we may develop a vaccine in year or year or so. It's on the very early stages. Government is trying to uh, research on this coronavirus firstly. Then only we will move to the part of vaccination. And as for you said that uh, intellectual property rights on uh, such vaccines, it's not possible that one nation should hold so much power on a particular vaccine, which is a life-saving drug for so many people. I think that vaccine should lie with WHO and all the handling of that particular vaccine of CureVac you are talking about should be on the side of WHO that does the global need rather than focusing on benefit of one particular nation. Yeah. Oh, God bless. I hope that happens. But that, you know, that does take me to one more thing I want to ask you about. Uh, I know you follow American politics. Um, you follow Trump and, uh, you know, how people in India feel about him. And I wonder um, how closely you follow the American candidates and debates uh, now uh, between Bernie Sanders uh, and Joe Biden. And I wonder how you feel and the people in, you know, in your community feel about the presidential election. 
who is leading and who should win and why? Uh, I think uh, one thing which I noticed when Trump was in India and there was a channel of White House on YouTube and there is a channel of many uh, Fox News and other channels on uh, US media was working on it. So one thing which I noticed uh, in the comment section was that most of the people were uh, Republicans and who were commenting in the favor of Trump. They were saying that Democrats will not show this side of President Trump in the United States. So this is one thing which I observed as on online media that uh, Trump is having support in the United States. It may not be visible, but online it's not visible. Well, that's just all the more reason why I have to come and visit you in Varanasi. I have to talk to you about these things. I have to tell you about what my community thinks and uh, who we are supporting and why. Uh, we'll see. We'll know a lot more in the next few months about uh, how this is all unfolding. But I sure would like to have a, uh, some time with you, uh, Karnicki, offline <laughs> so I can tell you my thoughts about it. Thank you very much, Carnegie. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad we got back together again. Let's do it again soon. Things are moving faster these days, and thus it's more important that you and I talk more often. Aloha and yeah. namaste. Yeah.